So welcome to our uh, Reading Online Sport Economics Seminar for the week. Um, we returned after a week off uh, and uh, we have, we're very pleased to have Kai Fisher presenting. Uh, and his title is already up, uh, which is fantastic. Thank you, Kai. It's thinning, thinning out spectators. Did football matches contribute to the second COVID-19 wave in Germany? Before Kai starts, just a few things to say. One is uh, I am currently populating the autumn schedule for uh, the Roses seminars. And so I've uh, I've already spammed a few people uh, and I've had contact from other people. If you would like to talk, uh, give a talk uh, between now and Christmas or between essentially uh, October, November or December, uh, please do get in touch. It will be um, good to have uh, good to have your uh, contributions. Uh, we've been meeting uh, for now well over a year and a half with the pandemic and as the pandemic uh, continues to rumble on, we'll probably carry on meeting at least uh, until Christmas. Uh, and um, so uh, we look forward to uh, many more interesting talks in the meantime. Uh, and today's talk uh, is Kai Fisher. Uh, and as he talks, uh, please do keep your microphones on mute. Uh, and if you have questions uh, for clarification, uh, Kai is happy to be interrupted for clarification questions. And if you have more substantive questions, please do park those uh, for the Q&A at the end. Kai's got about an hour to talk in, uh, and there's plenty of time for a Q&A at the end of that. So without any further delay, Kai, please do take away your talk. Yeah, thanks. Thanks, James. Uh, I hope everybody can hear me. I guess yeah. so. So, uh, yeah, thank you very much for, for giving me the chance to pre present the paper here in Roses. And uh, actually, uh, this is some work on COVID-19, so I guess uh, it might be of interest to uh, most of us. And uh, what this paper really is about is that it studies the second COVID-19 wave in Germany and tries to investigate whether um, football matches were a driving force in uh, in the rising case rates throughout autumn uh, and late summer 2020. And uh, if there are any questions uh, throughout the talk, so really uh, just, just uh, feel free to ask. Uh, I guess I, I won't need a full 60 minutes, so uh, yeah, I'd be happy to answer those questions. So, um, to start with the motivation for this paper, I think uh, yeah, maybe there's even no, no full motivation needed. I guess we all know that COVID-19 is one of our main struggles at the moment, and we are always looking for those, let's say, solutions or optimizations of uh, policies in the sense that we want to allow for as much social contacts and as much yeah, social activity, but at the same time, we of course want to keep uh, health risk and economic costs at a very yeah, low level. And of course, it's kind of essential for uh, in, in, in this debate to uh, think about uh, policy evaluation. Um, because of course, we want to want to implement those policies which are most effective in the sense that uh, they do not cost as much, but have uh, yeah, have very strong forces uh, against the virus. And of course, therefore, our kind of uh, academic um, academic evaluations of such policies are important. And I hope that this paper is one one part of it in uh, yeah contributing some findings on whether football matches uh, were one uh, yeah driver of the infections during during uh, autumn 2020. So uh, actually, just to just to show that uh, yeah, the COVID-19 is a big thing also in economic in the economic uh, literature. Now I just found a recent number by the Journal of Public Economics, which which for example documented that throughout the first months after the first cases of COVID-19, that there, there were about 350 submissions. So there there is a lot of uh, lot of policy evaluation and trying to understand how the virus works uh, going on. But uh, still, this this paper may be one contribution to uh, to this literature strand. And actually, as, as I said that this paper is about last autumn, uh, I was kind of, let's say two months ago, I was kind of thinking about whether this paper is really um, still uh, very up to date with with a lot of changes with regard to, for example, rapid testing schemes or vaccinations, which 
uh, are going on, we, we later see that, uh, for example, the number of visitors in the stadiums at this time was also different than uh, in comparison to what we, um, for example, uh, see at the moment. But uh, then there were, let's say, some 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 recent uh, events going on, which kind of gave me, unfortunately, the yeah, let's say the confidence that these uh, findings and that the, the topic is still important. So when we, for example, think about different policies, then we we at the moment see that the Olympics take place and no visitors are allowed, or at least not as much as some some people hope to have. Uh, and on the other hand, I. Uh, I just recently read that there, there were a lot of like over 100,000 people were allowed to uh, see see the race at uh, at Silverstone or at the moment there's the recovery of matches um, uh, and, and fans to the Premier League and also the Bundesliga. So, for example, in the Bundesliga, half of the stadiums will be allowed with a decreasing uh, number of attendance. Um, depending on the local uh, case rates, but I guess in the Premier League, it's it's, it's an even looser regulation. So we, we really have some heterogeneous re uh, regulation and policy going on when, for example, thinking about the Olympics versus those numbers yeah. here. So it's, it's, it's still the question, which is what is really the optimal policy and um, yeah, this this is also this was also uh, one example here with the uh, the European Championship where we observed some anecdotal evidence at least that there might have been rising infection numbers after some of these matches. For example, I think in relation with the the Scottish fans in London, for example, or uh, Finnish fans in in Denmark. Okay, so what do I exactly do in this paper here is that. Uh, I, I try to understand what the role of mass gatherings was during the second wave, uh, so so autumn 2020. And uh, for that, I, I study football matches and their impact on public health. The questions which are answered here is first of all, what is the general overall effect? So do we actually observe that football matches have an influence on COVID cases or is there no effect at all? Um, and in case that we find some effects which drive us or which heterogeneity can explain, um, let's say, whether case rates are higher or lower after matches. So can we learn something about whether an optimal policy should be related to local case rates or, for example, the number of attendants in the stadium? And what we also will look at is then uh, what is the optimal, uh, what is the channel here for the infections? So what I mean by this is, um, do we, for example, observe higher case numbers um, in, in the sense that uh, we we have a lot of infections which are kind of transmitted throughout the country after a match, or do we have a higher higher case rates, especially because mobility increases re in relation to football matches? That's what we will look at. Uh, as well. And as last additional motivation here, I would like to address the timing of the matches. So when we, for example, look at the infection development in Germany uh, in, in 2020, um, the beginning was very similar to most of the European countries. You all know this first, um, this first uh, hub, which was, I think, a little bit later in the US, for example, but it, it was very similar across the globe. And then we, we, we actually had a very, let's say, almost COVID free summer uh, and increasing and almost exponentially increasing uh, case rates uh, in, in, in late summer in, and uh, autumn 2020. So what we see is that the, these case rates actually try, uh, started to increase from August onwards. And that's especially the phase where football matches were relaunched. So the first football match with visitors was on 1st August, or yeah, 1st August, August the 1st. And so uh, it, it actually kind of raises the question whether football matches have anything to do with this development. So were they a driving force or uh, maybe there, there's no relation at all? So that's kind of the, the idea here. And um, we already have this here. And what what are the main findings here in the end? So the, uh, the what we do is we, we study the effect of football matches of over 600 football matches between July and November 2020. And 
uh, we, we observe an average number of visitors of about 1,000 um, visitors per match and an average occupancy of 8%. So these matches are especially uh, matches from um, the uh, first, second and third league in Germany and also um, women football, so especially professional football matches and not just that this, um, let's say, free time league uh, football matches. And the results here are that um, one match especially increases daily infections by around 0 0.5 to 0 0.9 cases per day, which corresponds to uh, about 5 to 10 percent of the local incidence level at this time. And we observe that there's a higher spread for a higher incidence level. So what this means is that actually a policy, for example, should be related to uh, the case, rate, case rates which um, actually are at a certain uh, county, for example, on the county level. And that's what, for example, also the German government did. So they uh, they they launched a certain um, uh, certain matches for visitors at very low incidence levels, and um, uh, then said, "All right, we 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 have to um, do ghost matches for higher incidence levels," and that's kind of something which is really uh, supported in these results here. And what we also see is that in the framework of uh, the the second wave, where we especially had occupancy levels up to 25%. So this was kind of the uh, policy guideline here that the government said, all right, we allow at least 1,000 spectators or, 20, or, or up to 25% occupancy back into the stadium. So what we see is that at least for these occupancy levels, there does not seem to be a lot of heterogeneity um, to be going on, which means that is in this area of 0 to 25% occupancy level, it does not seem to be the case that higher occupancy Im directly implies higher cases. But of course, this kind of has to be, at, yeah, uh, it, it should be considered here that uh, the, the infection uh, level, of course, might be higher if we are talking about, let's say, occupancy of 50, 75%, so beyond these uh, incidence levels, which we do not observe here. Interestingly, we also um, uh, see that in, in contrast to, to some findings from, from the literature on German case transmission throughout the first wave, where we especially had some evidence that, you know, counties um, were uh, experienced more infections if they, for example, had commuter uh, relations to other counties or things like that. This does not seem to be the case here, and this is highly related to the fact that away team fans were banned from the stadium. And what we really see is that the increasing case rates are just based uh, in, in, in the counties where the match took place and not in the county of the away team, which of course also has some other implications because you might think that away fans, for example, even if they are not allowed to go to the stadium, they might meet up in, 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 in pubs at this time, or for example, meet with some friends in, in their personal living rooms or things like that. And this could have increased the case rates on the away team county level as well, uh, as well, but this is something what we do not observe. And this of course gives us some more intuition that the infections are really related to the stadium and not just people watching football in some other places. And last but not least, we find that uh, the main channel for this increasing case rate is an increase of the mobility level. Um, and this mobility data is on the county level. So what we see is that one match typically is related to an increase of the mobility by one percentage point in this county at a certain uh, certain match day. Okay, so so, so let, let me let me just um, say something about the literature here. So in general, I mean, yeah, this is really just a sh short sketch of the literature in the sense that there is immense literature on COVID-19 and of course every, typically every part of it is relevant. But just to give you some uh, idea of what has been done on um, the transmission of uh, of uh, COVID-19 with regard to 
uh, economic behavior. We, for example, have two great papers uh, on schools, which which actually show that at least in Germany during uh, the summer of 2020, there has not been any increase in case rates after, for example, students getting back from their um, from their summer holidays into the uh, into the schools. And of course, there's some other literature like on elections and election days where people meet up or those two papers here by Timo Fetza on um, on I think English case studies uh, where they, for example, uh, um, show that uh, contract contract casing is really, really important. Uh, but but what of course is especially interesting to for this paper here is the uh, literature on COVID-19 and sports events. So um, there, there has been some other literature on, on the spreading of um, viruses or diseases or especially influenza, I guess, um, with regard to sport matches. So for example, there's the paper by Kadassi who, uh, who find uh, um, spreading effects of um, uh, uh, diseases in um, sport venues. But of course, we know that COVID-19 is, is not like any other disease, so it's especially interesting what uh, what other uh, scholars have, have done on COVID-19 and sports. And there is some literature on the first wave. So for example, there's there's one paper by James and uh, his co-authors on, on English football and, uh, and the effects of English football matches during the first wave. And also there is some literature from the US uh, on, on NBA and NHL matches. And uh, there's some consensus, I, I, I'd say, that uh, those matches actually were important drivers for the case, for, for local case rates. Now, while, while these findings, of course, are very important, it's the setting now is a little bit different in the, in the second wave, right? So in the first wave, most people did not even know that there, uh, that there was a disease coming. Uh, or it could not even um, like, uh, or maybe even did not know that something like social distancing may reduce risk. So the setting was very different in in autumn after like already half a year of experience with um, yeah with with COVID nineteen. And of course the the regulations and policies in place were different as well. So I already said that for example in Germany occupancy levels were below 25%. This, of course, was not the case during the first wave. So it's it's kind of hard to say that this is the optimal benchmark to compare um, compare results. So therefore, as two papers on the second wave are more interesting here. So first, there's a paper by um, Barshakov uh, on, on COVID uh, cases in Belarus. The problem here is that, you know, Belarus is one of the few countries who do not or uh, yeah, who, who treat COVID-19 differently. So um, this this paper especially kind of analyzes matches which still kind of take place in a way which is very comparable to pre-COVID times. So maybe this is also not the optimal benchmark. And there's then uh, there's another paper on Germany by um, Brian Bach and Mietze, and they especially focus on similar matches as I do. But their focus is not on the general spreading here. It's it's more about uh, whether matches where a, a, a duty to wear a mask in comparison to matches where no mask were uh, worn at this time uh, was uh, was kind of their um, theme of study. So they they uh, kind of extracted the finding that um, wearing masks during matches actually really reduces uh, spreading here. Okay. So then let me directly come to uh, what I really did. So, uh, so uh, what what is the data which I use and and what is my empirical approach? So what I make use of is, is the typical um, infection number data set in Germany. So we we, we, we over here have, have a health institute which is called uh, RKI and they collect all those relevant data on, for example, uh, every infection, uh, the the age group of infection, sometimes even the timing of the infections, and I I make use of this data. And this data is on the county level, so you already see those uh, three uh, plots here, uh, where um, I, I kind of plot Germany divided into its counties. So we have about 400 counties, and that's kind of the observation level, uh, and 
um, I also say, okay, all right, so if there's a match in a certain county, then this county is treated at a certain date. So what we also see here is that uh, I exploit spatial and, and time exposure to football matches. So you know that the, the main problem here is that um, we have some counties which are treated, some counties which are not treated, and those counties which are treated, they are often even treated multiple times. So, for example, you know, one one team plays on a certain Saturday a home match and two weeks after this day, there's a second home match. And it's hard to disentangle those effects. And therefore, I will later on kind of try to use a, a dynamic setup. So an event study setup where we can really track the development of the infections related to one match over over time. But before this, let me just say um, some things about the regulation which were in place here. So we had matches up to um, up to 25 percent of occupancy or at least 1000 spectators which were allowed to the stadiums. And less spectators were allowed if there was a seven day incidence above 35. So 35 cases per 100,000 inhabitants over seven days. And when this kind of mark uh, and when the cases even crossed the mark of 50 cases per 100,000 inhabitants, we actually um, had the case that um, no two, just let's say 300 fans were allowed to the stadium. So it was, was kind of um, a strict, strict regulation with increasing case rates. There were less fans allowed to the stadium. Yeah, and um, let me let me just show you uh, two two tables here. So the first thing is uh, the the overview on on which matches I observe. So I observe matches from the first four divisions in Germany, which is the Bundesliga, the second Bundesliga, the third league, and then the fourth league is kind of split up into several so-called regional leagues. And then there were some other competitions like uh, the yeah the trophy over here uh, or cup games. And uh, actually, there were about two, two, uh, uh, 1,200 matches during uh, the begin of, uh, from the beginning of August until um, the beginning of November, and almost half of it were played as ghost games, and the other half of it was played um, uh, in, yeah, in the presence of some spectators. And you already heard that the average. Um, visitor number was about 1,000 and occupancy about 8%. And what might be interesting here as well is to see how the visitor numbers kind of relate to the um, to the cases in the local area. So what you see here on the x-axis is the local incidence level. So I said that especially at the, at the mark of 35 and 50, there were stricter regulations uh, going on. So that's why you see that especially attendance was very high for quite low um, infection uh, levels in certain counties. And then there uh, especially were lower um, in, uh, lower attendance uh, for matches with uh, uh, for matches in counties with higher um, case rates. OK, so and as you see in 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 these three plots here, there's some 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 nice variation going on in the spatial dimension as well. So especially you see here on, on, on the left hand side, for example, that there are a lot of counties treated, but some also untreated. So the gray counties are untreated and the others um, are, are treated with a, a different number of matches. Or for example, here, this is not the number of matches as on the treatment level, but the number of spectators at the cum cumulated number of spectators. And also, as you see on the right hand side, this year is just the, the, cum cum uh, the cumulated number of infections throughout the um, yeah, throughout late, late summer and autumn in Germany. And as you see, there was also some spatial variation going on. So especially the eastern part of Germany is much more remote than the western part and therefore 
there's some structural pattern going on that inspection levels during 2020 were especially lower in the eastern part. And this is, of course, something which we kind of have to consider here. So this directly brings me to um, to the, let's say, the re regression here, which I try to apply. So as I said, I especially want to track whether a match has a certain effect over time. So we know that we do not ob observe an infection effect of a certain match on on the same day so we have to kind of wait for some days until you know those newly infected persons get the first symptoms are tested then are registered in a certain yeah. database so what we do is we kind of uh, look at a certain county where a match took place at at a certain day zero if you want so and then look uh, how the the case rates developed over the following 22 or 29 days, so three or four weeks, if you want, so and uh, whether there was some some structural pattern going on before that, and this is kind of the main main event study regression here. And of course, I also control for some some factors here, which is, for example, um, some uh, general mobility data on on. Uh, on the state level, which is, for example, I, I think provided by Google Trends here, and of course some some state fixed effects and day fixed effects to control for uh, the variation in uh, in the spatial dimension, which I, for example, just mentioned that in eastern parts of Germany, infection levels were kind of persistently lower, and of course the the uh, the time dimension, as we saw some increasing numbers. Uh, throughout uh, autumn 2020, and then some regional trends, if you want, so on the state and week level. Yeah, so so this is kind of the the basic regression outcome, and then let let us directly uh, uh, look at at the results. So these are kind of the baseline results here. So I. I most of the time provide two plots for each for each outcome, which is um, that I I once look at the impact of one additional match per 100,000 inhabit uh, inhabitants in a certain county, and the other measure which I kind of use as a treatment measure is the number of visitors or spectators per 100,000 inhabitants. So that's why you often you will now often see two plots and the left hand side is usually the effect of one additional match and the right hand side is then the effect of one additional spectator if you want so. But uh, as you for example here, you see here the effects are very similar. So how do how do we interpret these plots? So uh, what we for example see is that at a certain day zero in a certain county there was a match and then we for example look at whether uh, we observe incre increasing case rates after this time. And this is especially what we see here. So, for example, throughout the first 10 days, nothing really is going on after the match. And this is especially the phase which I just mentioned, right? So people meet in the stadium, maybe get infected. And um, yeah, it, 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 it takes some time until they develop some symptoms, get tested, are registered and things like that. And that's why uh, it's it's kind of likely that if there is an effect that we observe this effect with some delay, and actually that's what we see here. So there's an incline in uh, in the case rate after about one and a half or two weeks, and this uh, uh, this incline is then significant, and this is a very similar pattern be, uh, for for both treatment um, variables here. So there's an increase in the case rates from from one match related to one additional match. Uh, or one additional um, visitor. So, so these are kind of the baseline results, and what we see is that there is an increase in the case rate, and, and there's also a flat pretrend. So there, there, there does not seem to be any uh, structural um, yeah, differences between control and treatment group going on before the matches. And if we, for example, translate this general effect, so you, you see, for example, that. Uh, here, one additional match per 100,000 inhabitants increases daily cases by about two uh, in, in a certain county. Then this uh, then this can be uh, translated to about uh, five to ten percent of the local incidence level at this time. Okay. So, well, what we what we of course now are interested in is 
how do these general effects, which we just observe here, vary with some certain, let's say, certain exogenous circumstances? So we already saw that there, there is something going on. So it seems to be that um, yeah, football matches actually cause some infections or at least are related to some infections. Um, but is this, for example, mitigated or fostered by, by the incidence level? So uh, does it matter how much cases a county has at a certain day of time? So what I do here is I kind of run these um, event study regressions for four different um, a subgroup of matches. So the first subgroup is um, are matches where the incidence level is below 15. So just keep in mind, 35 was this benchmark where especially a lot of um, visitors, uh, also, uh, so up to 35, there were a lot of visitors in the stadium and then the numbers drastically decreased uh, with, with a higher incidence level. So it's interesting to study, especially the variation up to 35. So we group it into seven day in incidents uh, up to 15, 15 to 25, 25 to 35 and above 35. I, I here even plot the, the, the daily coefficients. So, so to, to see whether they are, uh, when exactly the kind of the starting point of an increase may be. And what we observe here is that for a very low incidence level, so below 15, there does not seem to be anything going on. A similar for, for 15 to 25, but when, when we kind of look at matches with a higher incidence level, it seems to be that cases really, yeah, uh, at least increase uh, at a, yeah, very fast here. So uh, it seems to be that the, the local incidence level is very important. And of course, this, this is really in line with this, um, yeah, uh, with the thought that the virus, of course, can spread exponentially if there are more people who are infected and get in touch with more people. So, um, yeah, what does this actually mean for the policy which was in place in Germany at this time? So, first of all, it seems to be that it was correct to, to have this cutoff point at 35 because, as you see, matches above this point, they especially had a strong increasing numbers and it, it may may have even been that 35 was just yeah was was yeah even even matches below 35 had some incline in the case rates so this is one of the the findings here and to to also have some other heterogen uh, heterogeneous effects uh, um, to look at some other heterogeneous effects uh, we, we also said it may be of interest to to look at the occupancy levels and uh, that's that's what we what we do here. So occupancy levels up to five percent, five to ten percent, ten to fifteen percent, and uh, above fifteen percent. And um, as you know, especially the the matches uh, with an occupancy of above fifteen percent, so typically fifteen to twenty five percent, those were the matches which um, were played. Um, at at a at a lower incidence level, so because uh, such a high um, occupancy level was only allowed up to you know the the 35 mark of um, of cases. So actually, we do not see uh, a lot of uh, an incline going on here for for this higher occupancy level. It seems to me that if there is something, if at all, then this is for lower occupancy levels, which especially were related to those. Um, matches where the case rates was uh, were ex actually kind of high. So it seems to be the case that within this variation of occupancy of up to 25%, it seems to be more important what the incidence level is than, than the occupancy. So uh, of course, um, we, we're just talking about occupancy levels up to 25%, but I think this is still an interesting uh, interesting point to cover here. Kai, can I just interrupt you there? I've got a question from Sebastian. Yeah. Hi, Kai. Just two quick questions. Is the, the purple area, is that the confidence interval we are seeing in your figure? Yeah. So so the uh, the 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 dark blue 
uh, area, that's the the 90% confidence interval, and the 95% interval is the um, light blue area. Okay. The okay, but so then, if I remember correctly, the results you are showing, then most of them, almost all of them, are not really statistically significant. Is that right? And then I mean. So, you look at I think you have daily daily results and most of them don't seem to be really significant. So maybe you can can say a little bit um, about that how you see that. So so I guess the um, the important factor is here how uh, how small the bins are. So 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 when we for example go back to the first plot, I, I here include in, in in one point in one bin. This is typically three to four days, as you see. And then, of course, the coefficients, they are estimated more efficiently. So that's why you, you observe those significance effects here. And the, the, the trade-off in these plots are kind of that you, uh, that you either bin the, the coefficients, then you, you get more efficient estimators. So for example, typically those um, the, the, this area will be significant as well, but you do not exactly observe where the incline of the case rates is. So um, I'm, I'm kind of confident that that you would see significant effects here if you, for example, do not look at daily coefficients, which just are based on, let's say, um, a, a, a less observations here in comparison to, for example, aggregating for, for point estimates. OK, thank you. All right. Then let let me uh, continue with um, another point which I which I just mentioned, and and this is the effect uh, across the counties where the matches actually took place. So there is some literature going on, which, for example, says, all right, if if a certain county and its population is uh, much in contact with um, for example, other counties via work, working relations or commuting patterns, then it may be that a certain um, high case level from one county is transmitted to another county more quickly. And actually, it's interesting to see whether this is also the case for um, away teams and uh, uh, in, in this football setting here. And actually, uh, away fans were not allowed to join those football matches. So what this means is that there were only typically there there were were only um, home fans uh, in this matches. So so people from the local area. So what we should observe is that if there's no no fan infected in the stadium from the away team county, then there shouldn't be a shouldn't be an effect on the case rates in the away county, and that's what we kind of observe here. And of course this this also has the additional implication that you know that uh, for example if if a cert if your team plays plays away then you may still look the match on tv or for example in a in a pub or uh, somewhere else where you are kind of maybe meet up with some friends and um, of course you you may have some increasing mobility or um, increasing contact with other people so it, it may be that there are also other or increasing Increasing infections going on, and what 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 this means is that the the fact that we do not observe an increasing case rate here is uh, also related to the finding that uh, these additional channels via which uh, uh, infections could take place. So, for example, meeting up in pubs or things like that, they do not seem to be as important as the yeah. The, the meeting of other people in the stadium. So it seems to be that the effect especially is, is actually related to the stadium and not just to, for example, um, people meeting up in relation to a, in a certain match. Okay. So what might be of interest here as well is how can we how can we explain this whole um, this whole effect? And uh, what, what I mean by this is not kind of this, this micro evidence that we can, for example, understand uh, where people exactly meet in the stadium. So do they meet, I don't know, on, on the way throughout the stadium or do they meet somewhere else? 
uh, this is not what I mean, but what I mean is, for example, do we actually observe an increase in the mobility uh, in a certain county where a match takes place? I mean, there is a lot of literature really discussing this uh, general pattern that more mobility means more contact to other people and in fact this means more infections. So do we observe mo higher mobility levels when there's a football match? And that's what I try to investigate here. So when you, for example, look at this left plot, day zero again is the day of the match. And that's kind of the mobility level at the day of the match. And if we if we think that there's a higher mobility level at this certain match in this uh, at, at in this county at this certain match day, then we should observe lower mobility before and after this match because it's, the higher mobility should only be related to the match. And ex actually, that's what we see in, in, in both of these plots here where we have a kind of lower mobility level than an increase at the match day, which obviously it seems to cause these additional cases, and then a lower mobility level afterwards. And that's the same for both treatment indicators here. Um, and what is also interesting with regard to mobility, that's what I kind of try to, to show in this table here. So when our outcome variable in a regression is mobility, then we actually already now saw in these plots that a certain uh, an additional match per 100,000 inhabitants uh, causes mobility to increase by, by slightly more than one percentage point of mobility. Same for, for, uh, for additional visitors here. But what we also see is that the effect on the mobility in the uh, away team county is, is strictly smaller or at least uh, not as high as uh, in, in the home team county where the match actually takes place. So and this might explain why there is no effect on the away team county, no spillover effect, but, but uh, on the home team county. And this difference might really be related to this um, people going into the stadium and uh, in the end then the, um, the actual infection. Okay. So the, uh, those are kind of the, let's say, the, the main findings. And of course, I did some robustness checks, which, which I can shortly mention here. So what, what we, for example, know is that um, for these football matches, of course, professional football teams, they are more likely to play in, um, in, in big cities. So every big city usually has a football team, a professional football team. So actually, there may be some some variation going on in the sense that football matches especially take place in cities and cities may be more likely to have higher infection rates because population density, for example, is higher. So what I did here is I, I um, for example, looked at when we only look at treated counties and the within treated county variation, the effects are very similar, for example. Or um, also what is interesting is when I just look at matches from the first and second league in Germany, um, the first and second league in Germany had some additional uh, regulation uh, going on in the sense that their hygiene concept was more strict than, for example, in the third or in the fourth leagues. So to, to test whether they are, um, yeah, the, the, their hygiene system was even better, I also looked at those matches, but there was no no difference between those top league matches and the other matches. So it seems to be that this is not a, a pattern, especially especially driven by lower league matches, for example. <clears throat> also, the effects are very similar when one especially accounts for the local variation in NPIs. So, for example, as I said, that the Eastern German parts had lower case rates. It, it, for example, caused that you uh, have less strict regulations in some counties of a country at the same time where other counties had stricter regulations going on. Uh, also, interestingly, uh, th there's the question whether these case increases, which we just observed, whether these are related to deaths. And actually, the answer is no. Um, what, which first of all seems to be surprising, but there's no significant effect on deaths even in the long run. And this can especially be explained by the finding that when you look at age heterogeneity here, especially 
uh, people from the age group up to 60, so 35 to 59. Um, this is the age group which um, experiences the um, strongest incline in cases. And it, it does not seem to be the case that um, um, yeah, a lot of additional deaths kind of are related to this to this group. And it, it seems to be that there are not too much spillovers to older age, age groups or elderly population here. So at least in, in, the, in this phase un, uh, until November uh, se 2nd, which I observe here, there, there were no, um, no uh, ad additional deaths related to this matches, at least not significantly. Uh, I already spoke about those commuting patterns, so let me just come to, come to the implications. So the, 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 the main question of the paper was, did football matches contribute to the second wave? And the short answer here is to some extent, yes. So ghost games, uh, is, so, so matches in general had an effect, but especially ghost games and away counties uh, do not cause an incline. So I also, uh, as, as I said, I, lo I looked at the away counties, but also at ghost games, and these ghost games do, did not uh, have an effect, for example, which again gives us some intuition that it's not not just people watching this watching a football match in any place, but it, it, it infections really seem to be related to uh, to the stadium. Also, we saw that infections do not specifically are related to occupancy or uh, um, levels, but instead to to the incidents, the local incidents. So whether there is a lot of um, inf infection and transmission going on in a certain county or not. So what does this mean with regard to the occupancy? So if additional occupancy uh, um, uh, increase um, does not matter here, it may be that um, the infections do not actually take place at the seat of, uh, of the stadium because it does not matter. It does not seem to matter whether you have an additional person sitting next to you or not. It it's more seems to be the case uh, that I guess um, infections are kind of on the way to the stadium or through the stadium. And I think this is very much in line what what we heard quite a while ago when when uh, when, when James discuss, discussed his paper on English fans. And I think this is kind of the similar uh, similar mechanism here. Um, with regard to the effect size, we observe that the transmission effects are by far smaller than during the first wave. So uh, when comparing it to the paper by Ahama, um, so let me come to to the caveats here uh, of this study. So of course, uh, this is already some months ago, and uh, we know that uh, rapid testing, especially, and vaccinations, of course, are some of the improvements during this crisis. And that is something which did not happen during uh, during this phase. So there was no, let's say. Um, no control for people in the sense that they had to bring um, a negative test result or uh, that you, for example, got uh, get into the stadium if you are vaccinated twice or things like that. Um, so this is, of course, a structural difference. But on the other hand, there are some other factors which might um, yeah, create a trade-off in the sense whether these results, which I estimate here are under or a lower or an upper bound of the findings which we may observe at at current matches. So we do not have testing and vaccinations in those results here, but we of course have by far lower attendance levels. So think think back at the at these thousand visitors on average per match, for example, um, when comparing this to, to actually uh, the current situation when returning to, for example, the Premier League or the Bundesliga and how many people they are kind of allowing back into the stadium. And of course, there's no micro evidence in the sense that I can can really uh, yeah, prove any of these mechanisms uh, within the stadium, for example, that um, infections take place at a certain location in the stadium. Now, now the, the final question here is what what do these findings actually mean for for our current time? So August 21 and we have these two opposing factors that they're is, for example, a higher incidence level at the moment in most countries than compared to those 20, 25 cases per 100,000 inhabitants uh, on a seven day level 
which was kind of the average um, case rate uh, during my sample period here. Um, but on the other hand, we have this testing, but I guess it's it's still a very important topic. And actually, I did not see too much research on, on current events here. So uh, I, I think it's it's still a very important topic and there there, there might be some uh, some need to to further study this in in our current time here. Um, yeah, and and actually that's it. So uh, if if there are any questions out there, I'm uh, I'm very happy to answer it. And thank you very much for your attendance. Thank you very much, Kai. That was a really very fascinating talk, very well delivered, uh, and we've got plenty of time for questions. So if anyone has any questions or comments, please do raise your hand. I'll stick one quick one in um, just for clarification as much as anything. You mentioned at the start your mobility data came from Google, is that right? Um, so so the there's some mobility data included in the um, in the regressions. This is mobility data on the state level. So uh, I kind of control this for 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 general um, for general mobility patterns. This comes from Google, so there's just like an, a website called Google uh, not Google Trends, Google Google Mobility. I get oh, Google Mobility Reports. Sorry, Google Mobility Reports, and there you get some data. I, I think the kind of the how how detailed it is in with regard to like the g regional separation may depend on the country. But when, when it comes to the mobility data in, in the mobility analysis at the end, this is on the county level and this is actually provided by the, the German National Health Institute. So, um, yeah, right. Great. Thanks, Kai. Uh, we've got a question from Sebastian. Yes, thanks, Kai. Uh, I have a question. I think at the beginning you said you will explain a little bit how you treat uh, regions which are which receive multiple treatments. So can yeah. you say a little bit about that? I I, mean, I might have missed it in your talk. I'm not, I'm not sure whether you mentioned it in your talk. Yeah. And um, later I have a second question. Maybe you can say a little bit about the effect size. If I remember correctly, it was it was uh, like something between 0.5 and one cases per hundred thousand. So I'm yeah. I'm not deeply in that literature, but um, do we consider that as a really relevant um, effect? So maybe you can can say to uh, something to okay. that as well. Yeah, let let me maybe start with the second point. So so the 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 effect here. So uh, on average, one match was related. So so, so to to be precise to be precise. So when using this um, this treatment indicator of what does actually one additional match cause? Then we observe that one additional match causes 0 0.9 cases. And when using this, um, uh, this visitor or spectator per 100,000 treatment indicator, then it's 0 0.5 cases per 100,000 inhabitants and per day. So this is, um, if you want, so this is half or one additional infection per day per 100,000 inhabitants in this county. And this um, in the end sums up to about 5 to 10 percent uh, of all the infections in these counties which we observed throughout the sample period. So if you, for example, think of any German town, let's say Berlin and um, you want to know what on average would be the contribution of, of football matches to the case rates, it, it would have been five to 10% here. And I think this this at least is uh, is a relevant, uh, relevant size. And, and when comparing it to former findings from the literature, so there's, for example, this um, comparison to Ahama here that the findings are kind of um, s smaller than during the first wave, but these results actually relate to indoor events. So I, I think MB, MBA and NHL, if I'm uh, if I remember it correct, there's also the paper by James, and actually the um, the effect size is, is is kind of similar to to what we observed there. But of course, there are some structural differences which we kind of have to account for. So in general, there were less positive cases and tests 
during the first wave because there was wasn't a, a certain um, like testing scheme if you want so um, and of course there were more people uh, in in the venues during the first wave so um, but just to say this about comparison of the effect size here um, and with regard to the first question so how do I treat uh, counties which are treated multiple times this is what I do here in this event study regression so I I kind of have um, let's say a lot of dummy dummy variables if you want so uh, for for um, for each day so a dummy variable if if you are um, minus my, minus 15 days to a certain infection minus 14 days to a certain infection and this turns one if there's a if there's a match, for example, 15 days ahead in a certain county. And this is how you, you can control for kind of these um, multiple treatments in the sense that you can consider um, whether, for example, uh, Berlin on the um, September the 20th um, has some, uh, has maybe a match on this certain date, but this date is also um, seven days past another match or seven days before another match and this kind of allows to um, yeah you to control for multiple treatments and this is um, yeah I guess this is better than uh, for example uh, agglomerating just the number of matches for example saying all right there there have been five matches in Berlin and now I look whether the case rates um, difference between July the 1st and November the 1st is higher or lower. So this kind of allows for this uh, development of time. Sorry, if I understand you correctly, so what you're doing with this event study is you have a, dy a dynamic dimension in that. But yeah. I don't think that is controlling for multiple treatments because what is happening if Berlin has a game and then, of course, you can, uh, with the event study, look, what is the effect one, two, three, four, five um, days after the game? But is Berlin going back in the control group or always staying in the treatment group? So what is the, if there is on uh, day 20 or 25 another game? So is then Berlin, is that the lag dimension of the first game after 20, day 25? Or is it the first event uh, for the second game, right? So um, is Berlin... If you are once treated, are you always staying in the treatment group or are you using that uh, region at some point as a control group as well? Yeah. So maybe I missed your point, but I think how you describe it is that is a dynamic dimension of one treatment. You uh, look at uh, legs and leads, but how do you really consider if, if, a, if a region is switching between treatment and control? So how do you address that problem? So you are right. It's it's the second thing which you said. So uh, you you have a certain county, and this county is treated at a certain date, and uh, also is part of the control group for other counties, if you want. So so what this means is that you, for example, compare a county which is treated. In, in seven days in advance, so you're, you 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 kind of look at the the seventh, um, so the the kind of here minus minus seven point if you want so, and then you control for the effect in this certain county which is treated in seven in one week in comparison to all these other counties which is which aren't treated in in seven weeks, and that's how you con control for the variation. Um, over time and also in the spatial dimension. So I, I, I hope that's 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 kind of clear. So um, otherwise, just just let me know. So maybe, maybe I, I do not explain it as good as I hope to do. Yeah, I'm not really sure whether that is uh, addressing the problem I have in mind. So because as I understand you, it's, it's more or less a normal event study design, what you are estimating, right? So just it's a normal event study design. Is that correct? Yeah. Yeah. And and I think that is not really addressing the problem if you have several events for the same region. Um, but OK, that is I'm, I'm, I think that's a different different uh, different problem you, you might want to address. Then. 
so so just just to to recap this so you you, you would say that the the problem is that you have multiple treatments for a certain you, you units also for a certain county and you say that that's not possible I, I don't think you can address it with the normal event study design because you have multiple treatments for the same regions at the, in, in different point in time right so if you look at berlin at day 25 it's at the same time again treated and then it, it's switching between yeah right so people. right so you you for example have then the treatment indicator for for day 25 the dummy turns one but if you also at the same day have um an, another match then you kind of have have the dummy equals one for the day 25 and and for day zero so uh, you, you you one day is kind of treated as 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 a day which is 25 days after a certain match but at the same time is at the match day of, of a second match Yes, exactly. And then you have Berlin switching between control and treatment group. But we can, we can. Yeah, but so, so, I mean, you, 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 you have to distinguish that um, Berlin is treated for T equals zero and treated for T equals 25. So it belongs to the treatment group and for those to, so this one observation belongs to the treatment group for t equals zero and t equals twenty five, and belongs to the control group for all the other indicators because there it's it's t uh, it's d equals zero. Um, so the dummy is zero for all the other events. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Thanks, Sebastian, uh, and thanks, Kai. Any more questions and comments? Georgios. Um, hello, uh, thanks a lot, uh, Kai, for the interesting presentation. Um, I have a suggestion to make, uh, which goes along to your robustness uh, check using uh, the deaths uh, caused by COVID. Um, I think, uh, and this is partly a problem of uh, all studies using cases, is that the number of cases is correlates uh, very high with the number of testing and uh, the strategy of each uh, region differs considerably even though we know that in germany every region every county even every state so at every diff at every different possible level here in germany there are different strategies or were different strategies in the in the last year um um, and that said, um, I would suggest, I don't know whether this is possible, I think there is um, this uh, DIVI um, register. So this is a mm. register of the hospitalizations. I don't know if they go at county level. However, I consider hospitalizations as the most robust way to find out what's happening because hospitalizations do not have to do with testing. The people will uh, end up in the hospital if they are infected and if they have serious uh, symptoms, whatever the testing strategy of the region is. So whether you could use this kind of data to find whether they at least contribute um, to a several percentage to the hospitalizations in each county. I think this uh, would be even more relevant uh, considering now that uh, the German state or uh, um, uh, German communities also, they want to go away out of this um, um, uh, number of uh, in the incidence uh, rate. Um, and instead, they want to focus on uh, the hospitalization occupancy, so to say. So um, I think uh, this uh, um, institution that I mentioned, DIVI, gathers this kind of information. I guess they have also at county level. I think they publish it only on state level, if I'm not wrong. However, if you could uh, get in hold um, to that uh, data and uh, run some testing, it would be pretty relevant, I think. Yeah, I, I think that's that's a good point. Yeah, I, I actually haven't thought about this, but 
I think I think you're right because especially what I said is that you know the the effects are especially related to yeah not younger age groups but but at least not to the critical age groups at this time you know nobody was vaccinated and we all especially um, thought about like people uh, in their 70s 80s and 90s and uh, those were not the age group which actually were too much affected by by the matches so it actually yeah it actually would be interesting to to see whether there's a significant effect on the case rate but for example not on hospital um you know, on on the um uh, cases in the hospital because we are just yeah because we're just affecting the younger age group which might not suffer too much from from the virus yeah that's that's a good point thanks george thanks guy got andy with a question next uh hi um this is an interesting paper um uh, I, I I think the main result makes sense because uh, obviously after the match the the, the the infection should be higher, but what I'm thinking about is that um, the number of inf the number in number of of infections uh, in a data set would depend would also depends on the number of testing done in in each county. Yeah. The tricky thing is uh, I'm not sure whether in in your results they, you have the, you have taken the number of testing into con in, in, into control because um, if there are some mechanism some unknown mechanism. Like the government may may try to use try to try to do more more tests after two two weeks after the match and so on, then your your results may partially reflecting that, re reflecting the testing frequency instead of instead of match results. So that's the thing that I would like to ask. Yeah, I mean that that's a that's a great point. And actually, the problem here is that uh, testing data in Germany is just on the state level, so. Um, the the testing data on the state level is included in in the regression, but of course, uh, as, as you as you correctly said, it does not account for, for example, county specific policies or things like that. That a certain county starts to increase testing, but they, I guess there's just no way to better control it than uh, just with the with the state testing and also those regional trends, which I try to include here. Um, but yeah, this this definitely is a point. So if, for example, if if your story kind of works out that you say, all right, they they know there was a football match, and two weeks after the football match, they drastically increased the testing, then this might drive the results here. But like from my personal impression, I I I would consider that this did not happen too much uh, in 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 Germany. That there was kind of a testing response to certain football matches because there actually was also for for quite a while the debate by some by some um, managers of, of the professional football teams for example that there was not a single case which uh, fully was um, kind of traced back to an infection in the stadium so they always said all right just show us a handful of cases which are really related to stadiums and we are kind of fine with um, returning to ghost games, and um, yeah, actually that's why I'm, I'm I'm not too sure whether there was an increase in in, in testing after certain matches. But uh, yeah, I cannot fully exclude that this is an important driver here. Thank you. Thanks, Andy. Thanks, Guy. Any more questions and comments? Just as a comment, I think your finding on the ghost games is quite neat. Um, the, the little bit of work that I've I've done with um, with Matt, we're not able to kind of well, we, we kind of are, but we're not able to quite dis, dis, disentangle quite so clearly. But there does appear to be an effect of ghost games in England, which I kind of always thought well, that's not totally surprising given that you substitute people watching a match in a stadium for people watching a match yeah. in an enclosed space somewhere, be it a pub or a bar or their own house with their friends around or something. Yeah, I mean, that's a, that's a good point. And I mean, I cannot cannot explain the mechanism here why um, why ghost games, for example, do contribute less. So it's it's just kind of one way to show that uh, 
the infections in the stadium actually seem to matter. It, it may, for example, be that, you know, some people who usually would go into the stadium, that they do not have any interest for certain matches if they cannot be part of it, right? So um, maybe there are just less people in getting involved and uh, that this might be one reason for it, yeah. Yeah. Any more questions and comments? Okay, well, we'll take that sufficient pause to uh, indicate there are no more. So thank you very much, Kai, for a really interesting and very clear talk on a very yeah, in-depth investigation. Um, yep, and thank you everyone for uh, comments as well and your participation. Um, we uh, will return, uh, so obviously thank you, uh, Kai, for your talk, uh, and we will return again next week when we have uh, Robbie Butler from the University College of Cork uh, presenting, and I am about to find his title. There's a bit of confusion on Twitter. I've tweeted the wrong title in the tweet, but the right title in the post. The, po the title is Monopoly and Competition, The Peculiar Evolution of Sport Broadcasting. So that's next week, Bobby Butler on August the 13th. So in the meantime, thank you once again, Kai. Thank you everyone for your participation. Uh, and uh, we'll see you again next week. Have a great weekend. <laughs>